Hey, Chris Safalvik speaking. I'm probably most well known as a Linux kernel developer for file systems and storage. And for this presentation on KVM storage, I'm actually sticking through to the um, storage theme, but um, this time we're talking about virtualized environments, about the cloud, about desktop virtualization, you name it. So when we're talking about KVM, we're actually talking about two components. There's a Linux kernel underneath, and there's something called QEMU, which runs in user space, which is the component where most of the storage we're talking about is implemented in. This presentation is not actually um, a tutorial on how to use KVM and QEMU. If you're interested in all these uh, gritty low-level details, go to the QEMU web page, and it's got a pretty good user's manual. Instead, we're looking at a high-level overview of um, how the KVM or QMU storage architecture looks like. With our 10,000 feet view, um, we have the host system on the bottom, which exports virtual disks to the guest, and the guest use them like regular normal disks that you have in your laptop or server. The virtual disks are backed up by um, storage that we see in the host device. We can have a whole disk that's just getting passed through to the guest. We can have partitions, logical volumes, or go even further up the abstraction ladder and use files. Um, if we look at the storage stack, we actually have a whole lot of components in our host that are there in the regular non virtualized systems. We've got a storage driver at the very bottom, a volume manager probably, a file system, and then we add additional components on top as part of our virtualization. So we have to emulate the hardware we present to our guest. We might have an image format in between and we repeat the whole game in the guest as well, which means we're up to two storage sets and a lot of more fun like uh, image formats and hardware emulation. Um, to make this a little more clear, let's look at a picture of uh, how this whole architecture looks. On the very bottom, we've got our host kernel that includes the file systems and storage drivers. And on the very top, we have a couple of guests. We might have a couple of Linux guests or Windows guests or any other operating system. And in between, we have QEMU. QEMU is a pretty big project, and we're only looking at the um, storage-related components here. On the very top, we have the storage transports which we have a few different ones off, which we're going to get to a little bit into later. And on the back end, um, we have a POSIX file implementation that maps back to regular system calls. In between, we have a couple of image formats, which we're also getting into a little bit later. The storage transport is the way we talk to our guests for storage. It is the way our guests access the storage we present to it from our um, virtual machine monitor or host system. And the default and most simple one is the emulation of an Intel ATA controller, which um, is the storage device used by playing PCs for the last 20 years in various iterations. And the advantage of this emulation is that it's A, a relatively simple device, and B, works with j just about every operating system we have in the PC sphere. because it's the most common piece of hardware we find on a PC. We also have an emulation of a SCSI controller, which um, used to be more common with higher end x86 servers until the end of parallel SCSI. So, this is a pretty important one for doing physical to virtual migration of older Unix systems. And we've got Word.io Block, which um, is a para virtualized block driver that is one that isn't actually meant for real hardware. And I'll get into a few more details on how this works. So Perl virtualization is a generic term, means we provide interfaces to our virtual machines that look do not actually look exactly like real hardware, but they're at least in theory more optimal. Should allow faster access, simpler interfaces, but the downside is that we actually require specific support for our virtualization solution in every guest because we do not provide a common piece of hardware that's already supported. So in our specific case, this basically means we have to have one driver for every supported guest just for QEMU. The Perl virtualized device interface we use uh, is Word.io.